The Nintendo Family Computer, or Famicom, was originally released in Japan in 1983. In 1985, it was released in the U.S. as the Nintendo Entertainment System, but there are some big differences. The Famicom's controllers are hardwired to the back of the console, and the unusually short cords come out the side of the controllers instead of the top. Notice how the second player's controller lacks the start and select buttons. The cartridges are loaded into the top. There's a nifty eject switch and a flap to cover the pins while no game is inserted. The Famicom's cartridges are shorter and have less keys than NES games and are therefore not compatible. Accessories like the light gun are plugged into this slot in the front. As it is shaped differently than NES plugs, the two are also not compatible. The original Famicom only has an RF output and can be set to either channel 1 or channel 2. However, channels are numbered differently in Japan than they are here in North America. So set your Famicom to channel 2 and your TV to channel 96. If your TV doesn't go that high, you can route it through a VCR and set that to channel 96. And for those of you in the UK, it's my understanding that over there it's difficult to get both sound and picture using an original model Famicom. Also note that you cannot use an NES power supply with a Famicom. It won't work and could even damage the console. In 1993, Nintendo released the new Famicom, or AV Famicom, which has a similar appearance to the top-loading NES that came out in 1995. Notice the controllers are no longer hardwired, and NES controllers are compatible. However, even though they'll fit, NES accessories are not. The game simply won't recognize them where Controller 2 should be. The slot for the accessories is now on the side. Apart from that, the only real difference is that it has an AV output, which uses the same cord as the SNES, N64, and GameCube. Although the NES has exclusive titles in both the US and the UK, most were originally on the Famicom. However, many titles were originally on something else. The Nintendo Family Computer Disk System, or Famicom Disk System. Some erroneously consider the Famicom and Famicom Disk System as one console. Perhaps because you do need a Famicom to use the disk system, but that's like calling a Sega CD a Genesis. As its name implies, the Famicom disk system reads disks. This brings with it some advantages, such as being able to hold more data and better sound quality. But at best, these things are barely noticeable. Another interesting thing about disks is they can be rewritten, and Nintendo set up kiosks for doing just that. Because of this, there are some games that aren't what the label claims but it's probably not as common as it sounds and easy to avoid by buying games that have been tested. Many games only use one side of the disc, like this volleyball game and Super Mario Bros. 2 or Lost Levels that's written on the back. Other games use both sides of the disc and will require you to flip it to side B at some point. Unlike systems that read cartridges, reading discs requires internal moving parts. And over the years, moving parts can wear out. For this purpose, I recommend getting one that's already had its belt replaced, as this is the most common issue. I would also recommend getting one that comes with a power cord. Interestingly, the Famicom Disk System didn't originally come with one, and could instead be powered by six size C batteries. Why Nintendo did this is beyond me. It's not like it's a handheld system, but then again, neither is the Virtual Boy. There are also other ways to play Famicom games. One such way is through an adapter that lets you play them on your NES. And if you already have an NES collection, you might even already have one hiding inside one of your games. This is because, with many of the original launch titles, inside is actually a Famicom board in an adapter. This adapter can be used to play any Famicom game, and will even let you run the Famicom disk system through an NES. Additionally, it allows for the Famicom games to recognize NES accessories. To find one of these adapters, check inside NES launch titles. They'll have a black label and be part of a series like Action Series or Sports Series. They should also lack tabs and be held together by five flathead screws. You may also need some luck. I tried finding one of these adapters to use in this video and checked like a hundred games that met the aforementioned criteria and to no avail. There are, however, third-party adapters as well. Unfortunately, third-party adapters only work on third-party systems. But if an NES clone is what you game on, third-party adapters are cheap and easy to find online. 
Then there's Famiclones. The term Famiclone refers to third-party knockoffs and can range in appearance from similar to the Famicom all the way to this thing. This is a plug and play, but unlike most I've seen, it doesn't actually have any built-in games. It is instead a Famiclone shaped like an N64 controller that comes with a Repro Multicart. I recommend approaching third-party systems with a healthy amount of skepticism as they're often not made with the same quality or have the same capabilities as an original. That said, before deciding on the AV Famicom, I was considering the Twin Famicom by Sharp since it has the slots for the cartridges, the discs, and the accessories. I also couldn't find anything bad about it online, but I decided against it out of concern that, as it's not made by Nintendo, I might find something I didn't like after I paid for it. Finally, there's Hyperkin's Retron 5. The Retron 5 has five gaming slots. Famicom, NES, SNES, Genesis, which is called Mega Drive in the UK, and GBA. They aren't region locked, and the GBA slot is backward compatible. When you insert a game, the Retron 5 uploads the ROM and plays it like an emulator. This allows for save states and other emulator capabilities. To me, the most appealing of these is translation patches. Download a translation patch to your SD card, put that in the Retron 5, select it when you insert the corresponding game, and you can now play it in English. The Retron 5 is pretty cool, and I'm glad I have one, but I prefer my original systems and use them more frequently. Frankly, there are a lot of things about the Retron 5 that annoy me, and it starts with turning the system on. You have to hold in the power button for what feels like enough time to watch a speed run. If you're starting to wonder whether your system is defective or even plugged in, give it a few more seconds. Since what you're really playing is a copied ROM of the game you plugged in, it would make sense for that ROM to be saved on the hard drive or even the SD card so you can play it later without the game plugged in, but it won't let you do this. What's even more annoying and makes even less sense is you can't play a game when there's more than one game in. The controller that comes with the Retron 5 has a well-deserved negative reputation, but it's not that big of a deal to me since you can use original controllers. There's no slot for Famicom accessories, but you can use NES accessories in their place. However, you cannot use light guns since there's only an HDMI output, and accessories that plug into both slots, like the 4-score, are not compatible due to the controller slot spacing. You can still play 3 and 4 player games though by mapping the controllers. Additionally, a Famicom disk system will not play through a Retron 5. If I could change one thing about the Retron 5 though, I'd give it the ability to read non-IPS translation patches. There's already a disappointingly small percentage of games that have translations available, and any that don't end in .ips don't work on the Retron 5. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If it helped you make a decision, or if you have more information that would be helpful to other viewers, please tell us about it in the comments. Thank you for liking and sharing this video, as well as for subscribing to my channel.